have another question, and I actually think this might be really appropriate for um, Michael Vu, who now sits uh, here in a different capacity, but for many years uh, ran our Registrar of Voters. I'm really concerned about um, low voter turnout in an August primary and a November uh, general. Um, I think those dates proposed are the ones that make the most sense in, in the case of a special, but it's still really problematic. Um, I am wondering if we could put aside, in addition to what's proposed here for the budget for running, running that election, additional funds. Um, you know, maybe it's 500,000, maybe it's a million, to really do targeted outreach to low propensity voters who tend to only vote in, um, in, uh, in presidential um, general elections. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. Let me just answer that question when it comes down to outreach in, in, in general. Uh, but the Voting Rights Act of 1965 plus the California Voting Rights Act as well as the movement towards the Vote Center model requires for outreach to occur for our protected um, classes and, and languages that are out there. So there's already a uh, built-in robust education and outreach program that the uh, registrar voters has built into. Part of that is, is going to be two uh, mailers in the respective languages that is required by the Voting Rights Act as well as the California Vo Voting Rights Act. So all of that's already built into the respective budget that is before you today. Um, I don't believe there is any more that um, budget that is needed to really outreach to all of District 4, but particularly those that are, are protected classes pursuant to state and federal but, I mean, laws. I hear you, but I really am concerned, right? Like you look historically mm -hmm. at um, special elections and the turnout's much lower. So just doing what we normally do just doesn't cut it because what we normally do doesn't lead to the turnout we need to see. So I think my request would be, I, I actually am, am very inclined to support the chairwoman's motion here um, and move forward with a special, um, but my request would be if we could include some additional funds. Um, again, I don't know what's appropriate, asking you know, whether it's 500,000 or a million, to really do, like, is it four mailers, is it five mailers? What do we need to do? Because we can't have an election where 15% of the people show up. Council? So to the extent the what the assistant CAO has described, that type of outreach, to the extent it is um, increased, however, would be appropriate as long as it's nonpartisan, non-campaigning, exactly. and um, non, it, it's not taking any positions. It, it's information to get out the vote type of that is consistent with that. Just would be. I'm talking about turnout. That's what we're talking about. I want to make sure if we're going this path, which I think the real impetus here is we want to make sure that we have the most democratic po um, process possible. We need to invest in democracy and make sure that low turnout voters who aren't going to know that there's an election in August and aren't going to know that there's a November 7th election in 2023 um, get quadruple the touches than they normally would so that they can show up at the polls. Let me just say that if there is a need, and I will touch base with the Registrar of Voters as well as um, the Registrar of Voters will be reaching out to the many uh, organizations that participate in this respective area, whether it's our targeted communities that the Registrar of Voters has, um, whether it's in, uh, low propensity voters in specific respective areas, they will have these respective conversations and determine where best to utilize those respective resources that they currently have. And if they do more, we will be coming back to the board for a full uh, approval on that. I think what I'd like to do, um, and again, this is um, would be to to support the the, the chairwoman's motion with um, a small amendment, which would be to include an additional seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in the budget to do outreach to low propensity voters um, and uh, leave it to um, Michael Vu to, to come back um, and let us know what that plan would need to look like. So I, the only reason why I would hesitate with the actual number and then low propensity voters is um, can somebody give me some legal guidance on this because I'm not sure that, go ahead. Let me just say that um, we get into a, a specific area of concern when it comes down to beyond state and federal law. Um, state and federal law has protections uh, for specific communities that are out there. That is the scope of, of the Registrar of Voters uh, uh, when it comes down to being a nonpartisan, independent body conducting an elections. Um, again, we will be working with the respective organizations. Can I, can I just clarify? Of course, we would intend that whatever you would do with would be within the scope of law. I just don't want us to, I don't want you to be hamstrung and need to come back to the, bud, to the board for additional 
a budget approval. Um, if you decide you don't need the money, that's fine, but I wanna make sure you have the scope of authority so that you're not coming back to us. We will certainly do that. As I, as I mentioned before, we believe that there is additional funds that are gonna be needed. We will go come back to the board. Should the board wanna approve that today, um, that's uh, fine if the registrar voters doesn't ne necessarily need that money in terms of concert, in concert with the respective community-based organizations out there. Um, uh, we w they will state that at that the respective time. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going. Obviously, if you make an assessment and you decide you don't need the money, fine. I just don't want us to be going in a circle. I'd rather you have some scope of authority, and then if you don't need it, that's okay. Uh, uh, just really quickly, Vice Chair, the Registrar Voters has put together a, a, a budget and they have considered um, the outreach and the training um, that they will need as part of this budget, regardless of the model that you end up choosing. If you choose the vote center model, you will have at minimum two mailings and a third mailing uh, that will be out there. The two are required by the vote center model in the respective languages uh, of the ones that um, are protected. And then there's gonna be the third mailing, which includes the voter information pamphlet and the ballot itself. So if you got already three mailings that will come, go out in a very, again, short window of time already. And is there digital that's included as well, since we know so Absolutely. many young people? Absolutely, there's already digital uh, that's out there. There's uh, already an outreach program. There's social media out there. The Registrar of Voters already has staff that is dedicated to our uh, low propensity voters, as well as specific languages, Spanish, Filipino, Vietnamese, Chinese, as well as um, our Native American community as well. Um, and then that's just for their federal uh, protected um, uh, communities. There's also the uh, state side of this as well, uh, which is specific to um, voting precincts, uh, for example, Laotian, um, Japanese, and some of these other uh, languages that are, uh, again, covered under the California <laughs> Rights Act. So this is already built as part of their program um, of ensuring that there is a robust education and outreach program. And let me just say that additionally, as part of that, there is already not just social media, but also print and radio that will be they will be going out to ensure that individuals know about this ele election. Um, this is their bailiwick. This is their whale house when it comes down to getting out um, individuals to vote and making sure that everyone is informed. I, I think I'm still, but I'm still really struggling with the fact that that's what they do day in and day out, and yet we have special elections. I was looking at the spreadsheet where you still have 17, 18% turnout, and I just would like to make sure that we're doing everything possible beyond what's the minimum to do as, as well as possible. So Vice Chair, I, first, I don't think that the registrar is doing just what is minimum, right? Because they said minimum is two, so they're going above and beyond with three, and then they also do all languages. So I think, um, so I, in the spirit of what you're, what you're requesting, I actually think it's, you know, let's, let's go back and take a look of, is there other opportunities of where we can expand? I think we have an opportunity to bring um, that item before us on May 23rd at our next board meeting, and it still gives us enough time as we're moving forward with the election. Um, as if you look at the dates, it will allow us to do that, right? And so we, if we want to, on May 23rd, uh, make additional any additional dollars, I think we can have an opportunity to really look at it. You can even introduce a board letter if you want to. That has I'm fine with that as long okay. as I have the commitment from any of my colleagues who are going to support moving forward the special election that on the grounds of it being democratic, that they're going to also support uh, doing robust outreach to ensure the election is democratic. Well, I don't want to end up in a point where today go, go. we have a vote of four folks who want to have a special election and then That's when we fine, come back but, saying but you how do we make sure that dem the election is democratic and I then understand. people change their mind. I understand, but we can't have that conversation because that would be a violation of the Brown Act. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to I can't accept that motion because I don't feel comfortable doing a motion for $750,000 not knowing where that money is going to go to and do we need that specifically right now. So if it's okay with you, I, I absolutely support what you're saying and I think my colleagues are not going to want anybody not to have outreach and access and make sure that we do everything we can for voters to get out there. I think in the end, it's gonna be the responsibility of nonprofit organizations, of community members, and as a former organizer of all of us to make sure that we get people out to vote. We know people don't vote in the United States of America just in general because of their, you know, so many other reasons. And so we have to do everything in our power to make, be part of that process and make sure that we continue moving forward. I 100% support what you're saying. I just, I, I, without more details, I have a hesitation to be able to support the motion that way. However, in the spirit of it, I think we have an opportunity to bring that item back on May 23rd and it will not create any problems for the timeline. Is, is that correct? That would be correct, Chairwoman. Okay. 
And I don't want to presuppose an amount either. I just wanted to, I want to make sure that we yeah. do this as much as possible. Yeah. I would also add, um, Chairwoman and Vice Chair, we can also just through our normal county communications, just inform people regularly of upcoming election and what's going on, just general election information. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of forums where, or a lot of mediums where we put just general county information out and we can make sure that that also uh, word on the election, the upcoming election in August, if you all choose to do that, that we would have that also as part of the communications. Separate and apart from what Mr. Vu was describing in terms of what we are required to do and going beyond that within the Registrar of Voters. But we would add that to our reg regular, just general election information. Okay, that's, I, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that you can come back on the 23rd with a plan to be as robust as po humanly possible. Um, not just minimum, not just medium, but maximum. Um, and with that, I will be happy to support the chairwoman's motion. I'm good. Just, I just wanna be on this topic. We gotta look, make sure that we're not, looks like, it doesn't look like we're putting our finger on the scale in any way. That is exactly we right. We need to make sure that. every single voter knows that there's an election and we are not biasing the process by holding elections in times when people who have don't have access well, to information know to vote. We didn't put ourselves in this situation. We, this is outside and I just want to be cautious of having any, any uh, notion that anyone's finger is on the scale trying to tip it one way or the other. I'm fine with what they're putting out the information the, the, Michael, I had no idea. We already do a lot, and I just want to be careful we're not tipping the scale. Yeah, Thank no, you. I think I think everybody here understands that the election process has to be fair, it has to be just, it has to be transparent. I think that we all agree that particularly in communities uh, that have been disfranchised, there's um, processes and systems that were created to ensure that they're engaged. We're going to continue to do everything that we can to make sure that that happens. But for now, we have a motion and a second. If yes, I sir. Could, I'm sorry. You know what, I, I just, uh, first, oh, that's right, I have to turn the mic on. Uh, I'd just like to thank Mr. Vu uh, for all the great work you've done in the registrar. You know, in my election, it, it came down to a handful of votes, and people kept saying, why is it taking so long, why is it taking so long? And yet, you made sure that everybody that sent in a ballot without a signature had a chance to come in and fix their ballots to make sure their vote was counted. Our county goes way above and beyond. I was the vice chair of elections in the state of California for a number of years. We have 58 counties, 58 registrars, and I was always proud when you came and spoke because you and your office did an outstanding job. So I, I, at least this supervisor appreciates everything you do and the extra effort you give us. So thank you for that. All right, with that, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Chairwoman Vargas, with that motion, this would direct staff to return to the board on May 23rd with a resolution that calls for a special election to be held on Tuesday, August 15th. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors.